uh, current early on uh, in Cobra Beer's life when you were first conceptualizing the business and setting it up. Um, uh, what was it like at that time? And were you surrounded as you are now by lawyers and accountants and bankers? Uh, where did you get your support from? I have to own up. I, I did a law degree, uh, but I never practiced. And I qualified as a chartered accountant, but I left the day I qualified. So you have nothing. You have no money to pay any advisor. Um, in many cases, the bootstrapping. Uh, we had, I had student debt to pay off. We got our first um, overdraft from Lloyd's Bank on Edgware Road for £7,500. Uh, and you know, we had to do everything uh, our, ourselves. And then you realize very quickly it's very lonely and you need advice. And we were very, very lucky uh, that quite early on, uh, we managed to get introduced to a top accountant uh, who is now a senior partner of an equivalent firm of BDO when we are here of that stature. What was that big break? Well, look, over the course of many big breaks, and one of them I remember very clearly, was we were getting backing from a government small firm loan guarantee scheme, which still exists to this day under a different name. Eventually, we found the bank who worked in those days, what is today HSBC, the Midland Bank. And, and you know, he was Polish, and his huge whiskers. And the name was Andre Wahaftik. And so Andre said, okay, okay, um, you're asking me to really, you know, this is, I see you're really passionate about your business, it's branded beer. I said, you know something, I trust you. How much do you think your business is worth? So I looked at Andre, my partner, I looked at Anuj, without blinking, I said a million pounds. I said, I thought you'd say that. But you've never given away any shares. You and your partner are 50-50. Why don't you just show me your company's worth a million pounds? Raise, raise 50,000 pounds and uh, give away 5% of your shares. Prove the worth of your company and I'll give you 200,000 pounds on the small firm so we And we went off. You know, we were growing at 70% a year, 70 We got onto the Virgin Atlantic Fast Track 100, listed the fastest great company in Britain. And suddenly your customers, through no fault of your own, stop buying from you. I mean, I'd opened up depots in Leeds, Manchester, and Scotland, <coughs> they got vans, sales force, any sales force. We were flying. We just started our first advertising campaign, Sachi and Sachi, London Underground, Evening Standard, Capital Radio. Cobra was flying. And were, and were you going international at the same time? And we started exporting. And you know, Literally, overnight, our customers started stopping the sale of them. What do you do at that stage? You have to act very quickly, adapt or die. And we had to, we had to sadly close down all those depots, get rid of all the bands. And we had, we had that's like 120 people. We went down from 120 people within five months to when, 17. When was, this was 1998. We had to try and rescue our business. And we were fighting off a banker trying to close us down for a $60,000 overdraft from due to the federal fund. And he was inhuman, insensitive, horrible man. So an accountant who we didn't even work with, who was a friend of the banker at RBS who had been taken, the accountant had been taken away from this chap called Saeed. He had a friend. The friend was an accountant. The accountant had a client. He told him the story. So look at how RBS had been with this chap, this well-known brand of life. He doesn't understand. His friend. Just a client said, I want to meet him. One meeting with him. And he wrote out a check for 30,000 pounds to me. He said, yeah, this is to help me. Who do you bank with now? <laughs> <laughs> Are you a banker yourself? Or? No. no. <laughs> OK, so um, on a, I, I give this to you on, on different dimensions. So and, I, and again, I think you learn pretty early on. It doesn't, there's an advantage of building a relationship with a particular banker. Uh, but over the years, you can build different relationships depending on what's appropriate. So my personal banking, I've been with Coots for a long time. So I mean, RBS were very bad to me on the one hand, but from a Coots point of view, have been brilliant. I mean, they've been really, really good. And the one word that keeps coming up with the phrase of is word, cultural connectivity with Indians. What, what would your advice be to people that may be looking to pitch to Indian businesses? Uh, one, there is one thing that stands out more, more than anything else. And if you look at, uh, if I go back to um, Asian values, so 
Well, we, I've been very outspoken about immigration because I, I think this government's got it absolutely wrong on immigration. And I've been openly critical of the Nump Secretary. The relationships are more important than anything else. If you can demonstrate that trust and long-term thinking, I'll give you another example. Rothschild, who we've worked with on an investment banking basis, who did our M&A for us, for example, with the joint venture. Rothschild, when I was introduced to one of my colleagues in the House of Lords, um, met the head of M&A, uh, Akhil, Akhil Saja, mm -hmm. and uh, who's head of their consumer. And he tried to help us raise, raise finance a few years ago. And it didn't work out. You know, he didn't charge us a penny. He said, no, it doesn't matter. I put a lot of work, my team's put a lot of work, it would have been hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of work. He didn't charge a penny. Because he was thinking long term. So that's the other thing I say, think long term. But of course, we have the M&A, we had the joint venture with Morse Coors, and, and of course, he got paid. But then, on top of that now, I've recommended people to Rothschilds. <coughs> um, and it, it, the payoff is very long term. If you take that part, if you get the trust of somebody in the Asian community, they will pay back not just with their own business, but they'll make the recommendations as well.